People ask, what is undervolting? Why undervolt? And most importantly, how do I undervolt my Steam Deck? And today, I seek to answer all of these questions in simple terms. Tech terms for the tech neophyte, for the everyday person. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by TomTalk. TomTalk is an innovative, tech-savvy, and fashionable design-driven brand. The Arcos bag in particular is made for the Steam Deck and ROG Ally. Inside is a protective W-shaped structure designed to protect your Steam Deck or ROG Ally from any harm. The exterior is made of recycled fabric that's also waterproof, great for transporting your stuff in the rain. Furthermore, this features special YKK zippers made to self-lubricate themselves, which means this zipper should last you decades. And when you use code TOMTALKSD, you'll get a 10% discount. Pretty cool, eh? Links in the description down below. In layman's terms, undervolting is the art of sending less than normal voltages to your components. Every computer component has a certain voltage that they run at by default. Think of all of those power-hungry components in your PC, such as your CPU or GPU. Wouldn't it be nice if those components used less energy while maintaining the same level of performance? How about having less heat at the same level of performance? Undervolting can do that for you. The main con behind undervolting is that not everyone can do it effectively. Even though all Steam Decks have the same APU, not all Steam Deck APUs are made equally. All Steam Deck APUs are rated to run at a certain voltage rating. Anything below that is out of Valve's jurisdiction. You'll have to find out the limits for yourself. This is known as the Silicon Lottery, but everyone has access to undervolting tools. It's just a matter of how far you can take your Steam Deck. Undervolting is really simple, but first you have to switch over to the Steam Deck preview channel. Do keep in mind that this is an unstable version of SteamOS, but it comes with a firmware update that updates the BIOS. After installing the update, you'll want to turn your Steam Deck off entirely, and then turn it on by holding the volume up button and turning the Steam Deck while it's held. Once you're in the BIOS menu, you'll want to go into Settings, and then Advanced Settings, and then from here you'll see the undervolting settings. As you can see here, I have a pretty decent undervolter. Now this is the part that's going to turn people off, but trust me, this is for your benefit. You'll want to change each setting one at a time by one level. Ideally, you would start at minus 10 millivolts. Try that out. If your Steam Deck boots successfully, okay, pretty good. Now play a couple of rounds of whatever major AAA title you own. You'll want something that ideally stresses your system out. Don't own any of those? Well, then you can download Halo Infinite. It's free to play, and mostly you're just doing it to test out the Steam Deck's stability. Once you've confirmed that there's no issues, no crashing, no visual bugs, nothing of the sort, feel free to move down one more tier and repeat the process. And if it's stable again, repeat the process again. Keep doing this till you find a voltage setting that's unstable, as in it crashes or there's visual bugs, or worse. For example, after a whole day of testing minus 50 millivolts, the lowest level it can go, I found my Steam Deck starting to struggle with some instability. So I went up to the second lowest tier, negative 40 millivolts. That's still pretty good all things considered, but you're not guaranteed to get these results. So you may be asking yourself, why go through all of this hassle of doing this on the Steam Deck? Well, the benefits are twofold. First and foremost, you get increased battery life. Now don't get me wrong, if you're playing a major AAA title, your battery is still going to go down pretty fast, but every single extra minute you get counts. There's obviously a more dramatic increase in battery life when you're playing a AAA title. That's I'm not really a benchmarking channel, but if you want more details on overclocking, be sure to visit Cryobyte's video on overclocking because it's good. The second major reason to undervolt is the thermals. See, the Steam Deck gets quite toasty, especially during intense gaming sessions. And of course the fans ramp up and get louder as well. Your undervolted components get less electricity flowing into them, thus generating less heat. There's also a major third benefit to undervolting, but that applies more towards desktop PCs. And that is, somehow, increased performance. Wait, that sounds kind of counterintuitive, doesn't it? Well, the thing is that CPUs that are undervolted tend to run a little cooler, and when they run a little cooler, they have more thermal headroom to run at boosted clock speeds. 
In theory, this benefit would also apply to the Steam Deck as well, but the truth is that it doesn't make a huge difference on the Steam Deck. After all, there is only so much the thermal system on the deck can do. I'm not sorry for calling you a dummy, because you're not a dummy anymore. You learned something new about your Steam Deck, hopefully. I've been having a blast with my undervolted Steam Deck playing Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, they fixed the game, who would have thunk it, right? Here's some disclaimer warnings, please don't do this if you value electronics, I'm not responsible if anything happens to you or your Steam Deck or any other device you try to undervolt. I know how you like to take things a little too far, so just don't do it this time. It'll save you and me a lot of headaches. If you like this video, be sure to press the thumbs up button and spread the good gospel of high tech low life. And if you want to see more high tech low life, be sure to subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications. And for you enlightened individuals, be sure to join my discord server. And if you wish to support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page, links in the description down below.